Good morning. Welcome to Fort Laramie Country Church. We're glad you're with us this morning. Today we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper. But before we do that or get started into this, this last week we had Veterans Day. And we want to take just a second and... Uh, so we don't we want to recognize vets. We'll be doing that in the service mainly because the price they paid You know giving their time and energies that we can be here on Sundays and worship without fear We live in a free country because of the price our vets have paid Do you run into one this coming week you tell them thank you and thank you for serving But before we get started if you may want to pause this and get your stuff ready for the Lord's Supper. If you were going to take it with us, I'm sure that'll that'll be fine. And uh, let's have a word of prayer. Fathers, we celebrate the Lord's Supper this morning. May it be done in a worthy manner. A manner which honors you and glorifies you. Father, and we thank you for what we're doing here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11 through 23 through 39 this morning. The reason I like 1 Corinthians is if you read about the account of the Lord's Supper in the Gospels, there's not a lot of details. He did it with his disciples, and then there's not a lot of details. Well, obviously there were some struggles, and we saw it in the church at Corinth. They'd made a big party about it, and people were doing the Lord's Supper, and people were getting drunk, and there was no, it was a mess. And so obviously Paul prayed about it, and he said, this is, this is what God has revealed to me about what the Lord's Supper is all about. That's why I like to use 1 Corinthians. It's actually an explanation of the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11.23 For I received from the Lord that which also I deliver to you. Now that's the Apostle Paul. He's saying, this is what God revealed to me, what the Lord's Supper is all about, and this is what it means. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is bro broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Examine yourself. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let man examine himself, so he let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For whoever eats the cup in an unworthy manner brings judgment on himself, not discerning the Lord's body. You know, it's, it, 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 it explains it here. It says, this is, what, this is what the Lord's Supper is about. But verse 24 said, after he had done this, he said, he gave thanks. You know, that's the first thing Jesus did when he was having this Last Supper with his disciples. He said he gave thanks, and, and he knew he was headed to the cross. He knew he was about to suffer and be whipped, crown of thorns. He knew his disciples would desert him. He knew he was going to die on that cross, a very slow and painful death. Yet Jesus still gave thanks. In Ephesians 5.20 it says this, Always give thanks to God, the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, for everything, that means everything. That's, that's, that's everything. I mean, it's complete. You know, I use epoxy glue. And if you've ever used epoxy glue, there's a hardener and, and you mix it together in equal parts and, and, and mix it up. That's how epoxy works. And once you've started or mix it, it really can't be separated. It, it's how you, you mix it and it kind of gets a light color. If you've given your life to Christ, thankfulness needs to be part of the epoxy. Uh, we can't separate the two. Uh, a follower of Jesus Christ must be thankful. If, if you've ever noticed here, 
in the stores here lately. It seems like it goes right from Halloween, which is a big celebration now, and the halls are full of costumes and candy and stuff. But, but Thanksgiving's not really a big deal. And it seems like they, as soon as the Halloween's done, they almost skip Thanksgiving, not always. And then they go right into Christmas. And it just seems like being thankful for what we have and where we've come from has gotten to be less and less important all the time. And I understand these constant demands and struggles and worries, you know, create a spirit of defeat almost. And, and that will virtually destroy a, a, a thankful heart. We, we must take time to recognize and be thankful. I mean, it's something we, we have to be intentional about. And, and we need to just sometimes take a deep breath and, and be thankful. And, um, and that's how epoxy works. It, really, we can't separate the two. Being thankful from being a follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, our, our, our walk with the Lord must be intertwined, must be mixed with a thankful heart if, if we're going to walk the walk all God intended for us. Uh, being thankful has always been what God intended for His people. In fact, if you go to 1 Chronicles 16, 4, uh, listen to what it says. Now, the Levites were the priest tribe. And this is what it says, And he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, to commemorate, to thank, and to praise the Lord God of Israel. That, this Think about their job. Their whole job was, uh, was to remember what God had done, to remember it, to worship and to serve Him. But it also, part of their job was to be thankful, to make sure that there was a thankfulness in front of the ark, and then to praise God. You know, followers of Jesus Christ need to worship, serve, praise God, and be thankful. It's part of the package. It's how it works. Colossians 3, 17 in the Living Bible says it this way. And whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus, and come with Him into the presence of God the Father to give Him your thanks. Being thankful, it must become an attitude of, of who we are. And an attitude is how we view any situation. And uh, uh, it, it, it has nothing to do with our circumstances. It, it has to do with what Jesus Christ did for us. Now next week, we're kind of walking into Thanksgiving here, and, and it won't be long actually. Uh, the sermon next week, we're going to dive into this in some detail actually. But we must view our life through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You know, and Henry Blackaby says it this way, Thankfulness is the found, fun, foundation to a Christian life. Thankfulness is a conscious response to come from looking beyond our blessings to their source. As Christians, we've been forgiven, saved from death, and ado adopted as God's children. The, Therefore, come. There cannot be a better reason for a grave heart, you know, um, in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. That's one of the things that we should remember is what Jesus did for us on the cross, and for that very reason, we need to be thankful. Uh, I'm going to read you just a couple verses here, and I'm going to encourage you this coming week actually all the way to Thanksgiving, to start finding verses to give you a reason to be thankful. And listen, here's just a couple. And here's Romans 5, 8, 9. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved by God's from God's wrath through Him. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. For that, I am thankful. In fact, 1 John 2, 1 and 2 in the Living Bible says it this way. My little children, I tell you this so that you will stay away from sin. But if you sin, there is someone who pleads for you before the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the one who is all that is good and who pleased God completely. He is the one who took God's wrath against our sins upon Himself and brought us into fellowship with God.
And He is the forgiveness of our sins, and not only ours, but of all the world's. You know, for those two reasons, you can be thankful. Christ died not because of that we were good enough. He came because we needed a Savior. He died for me while I was a sinner. You know? Verse 27, getting back to 1 Corinthians. Examine yourself, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. You know, it says in an unworthy manner. It didn't say that we had to be worthy. None of us are worthy to do the Lord's Supper. None of us are worthy to even come into the presence of God without Jesus Christ. But the manner in which it's done, and one of the manners that's worthy is to come with an attitude of thanksgiving for what Jesus had done when we do the Lord's Supper, that we recognize that and we're grateful for it. That should be the attitude in a worthy manner. We're going to give you just a few minutes now and we're going to play a song. And while that's playing, I'm going to ask you to take just, just a second and examine yourself. Look at your attitude. Are you thankful in everything for what Jesus had done? For that very reason, for that only reason. If you got sin in your life that needs to be dealt with, that you've been let, lingering there and you know it's it's causing problems. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, confess them. Spend some time with God just getting right. If you need more time than the song, pause this and then do the Lord's Supper with us. Take just a second now and examine yourself and remember, in remembrance of me, It says in 1 Corinthians that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me. Let's have a word of prayer. Father we do thank you for the price you prayed on the cross that gives us access to heaven that forgives our sins. May we never forget that. And we thank you for it. May that be the reason why we take this now. In your name, amen. You may take the bread. Then in verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. It says in the same manner, one of thankfulness, one of gratitude. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed, knowing that covers our sin. 
May we never forget that, and we thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Father, as we go out into the world this week, may our attitude resonate a thankful heart just because of what you did on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.